work and grind and fight and battle.
We good on y'all's end? All right. Well, let's knock it out. Let's go. Inside the Pirate Radio Studios with the battery of Wyatt Lunsford Shinkman and Ryan Crystal here on a Monday. We'll be with you live at 3 o'clock on Pirate Radio Live, but these guys are busy and could come in now and uh, talk a little baseball with us. So, Ryan and Wyatt, appreciate you guys coming down. How are we doing? Doing great. Great to be here. Wyatt, uh, we got a <clears throat> pickup game at 3 o'clock. Can you go three or four innings for us today? Or? maybe with the left hand <laughs> i can get you going to the left yeah uh your appearances are up and uh and and much needed uh but a great weekend for ecu picking up two out of three out of fau and uh how about the weekend for you uh ryan you're you're seeing it well hitting it well and yeah. uh things are going pretty good for you right now yeah no doubt feel really good uh i struck out a little more than i wanted to this weekend but i think that that kind of comes with more at bats in the first place and scouting reports getting out and everything like that so i think i did a good job being able to manage that just throughout the weekend and keep having good at bats because all that matters is that we have more runs than them at the end of the day it doesn't matter if i'm <coughs> over three or three or four and uh you got to be a complete player and a complete hitter uh to to play for cliff godwin that includes bunning and yeah. uh, i think we saw that in uh raleigh right yeah yeah i i'll stand by the fact that uh, like a safety sack like that is more exciting than like a jam job RBI single or like even just a regular RBI single like I don't know it gets the guys going so to be able to do that's pretty awesome yeah I mean and, and you're doing your job and uh, and and the excitement you show and your teammates show you're right it uh, maybe doesn't match a home run uh, but you're right like the to, to get that runner in and uh, you run back to the dugout it's a pretty cool moment yeah. for you right yeah no doubt I, I always I, I, I kind of yell when I go back to the dugout because I, when I got here, I couldn't bunt for anything. But obviously, <laughs> I've gotten plenty of practice of that. And now I would definitely put myself up there with anybody on our team when it comes down to like getting a run in with bunting or a drag bunt or anything like that. So I think that just having that in the bag is really important. And I like to celebrate that kind of stuff with my team because you see a big, slow guy like me, you don't really expect the guy <laughs> to be laying down a drag. So I don't know. It's kind of like Shank laying down a drag up there. <laughs> what is your uh, your speed? Can we get an update? What what color are you right now? I, I right now I'm, I'm I'm in between. I haven't decided what I want to be yet. <laughs> okay, year, but I don't know. I don't know. But the more I keep playing, I think it's probably gradually getting closer to red. But I'm never going to admit that I'm for it. Uh, Wyatt Lunch for Shingman here as well, and uh, Wyatt, a, a good weekend for the Pirates, and a uh, lot of lot of pitches for yourself as well. And uh, we I asked you coming on. So are you off uh, Tuesday and Wednesday? Yeah, we'll see. See if I can convince the coaches to uh, let me get back out there. But uh, I don't know exactly what the plan is, but if I'm needed, I'm going to be ready to go. So whenever my name's called, I'm going to be ready. That's kind of the tricky part where you want to pitch every game probably, but for the, the health of you and for the long term and short term, uh, you got you got to rest that arm. So yeah, you understand that now, I'm sure, at this point in your career. But is it still frustrating at all that you have to, to maybe sit out a game or two? Yeah, I think it, it can be frustrating at times, but like everybody wants to be out there and everybody wants to be in that big moment on our team. But uh, being able to realize that sometimes you do need to recover and sometimes that other people need to be out there and they're perfect for that moment has been something that I've learned uh, talking to Danny, talking to Jake, talking to Richie. Like Everybody can do what's needed of them when their name's called. And we all have that trust in each other down there. So being able to confidently watch somebody go out there and dominate is awesome. Yeah. And uh, a lot of times you're that guy dominating. And uh, sometimes it's your teammates. And it's really cool. Hopefully uh, we can get Jake Hunter on this week. But Jake was in that Sunday starter role and is now in a bullpen role. And we've seen him get some (coughs) short outings on Sunday. Yesterday it was Ethan Norby with the short outing. And then Jake Hunter has to come in and pick him up. And I just think that's cool that you guys have each other's back like that. And uh, you never know who's going to need to be picked up uh, on any given day. But but somebody's going to be ready to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jake's been great with that. He's been super selfless and just a team guy overall. And, you know, Norby might, I mean, he ran into a little bit of trouble. I don't remember what, second inning? What errors, too. Yeah, yeah, it really wasn't on him uh, that much. He kept his composure very well, and that's something that you might not see from freshmen at times. So being able to have him out there and learning is the biggest thing, in my opinion. But uh, our mindset's just 
one inning at a time, go close out the first, go close out the second, however long you go, and then we're going to pass the ball on. And you guys play so many games, you, you got to be ready for the next one, be ready for the next A-B, next pitch, whatever. But when you lose one like you did on Saturday that, that you felt like should have been in the win column, uh, any conversation Saturday night, anything different heading into Sunday, or was it just par for the course? I don't know. I mean, I think it, you can't go 56-0. Like, as, as much as you might want to do that, it's, it's just – totally unrealistic but i think we have a great idea of how good we are and i think that we've done a great job this year of understanding like losing one game is not going to determine the next game and we're definitely not going to let it ride into the next day and i think we did a great job of that yesterday especially when we were up eight to three and a little bit of trouble hit they gave up i don't know three runs in the sixth or seventh and like our team just kept their composure awesome and it was it was just a great job of our team to be able to bounce back from that and then I know Danny's going to be awesome next time he goes out. Everyone has an outing like that, too. And I mean, I've joked with him about getting the ball stuck in the backstop already. So it's like <laughs> we're already over what's happened and we're moving on to the next thing. Yeah. Uh, and, and offensively, uh, double digit hits yesterday and the previous day. So you guys are, uh, are hitting it well. Um, the MLB The Show Theory, that was brought up by Dixon Williams last week. And Ryan, uh, you can attest to this. He said he'd love to see the numbers. <laughs> In real life, your batting average is prior to MLB The Show coming out and then after the show is coming out. And I don't know if it's coincidence or not, but you're hitting the ball pretty well, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I used to just downplay it. Last year, I didn't play MLB The Show. I told JC and Dixon they were crazy, but this year I'm buying into that theory 100% because <laughs> I started playing two and a half weeks ago. I think it was the Wednesday after we played Elon, and we went and played UTSA, and I've been playing pretty well since then. So I am 100% bought in on the theory that just having the strike zone on the screen all the time is a very, very good thing for a hitter. And you were just playing before you came over here, right? Yeah, I was. I had a great comeback win. Heart's still racing, so. <laughs> That's awesome to hear. Why? Do you play at all? No. No, not at all. Uh, game of choice is going to be Fortnite. Okay. I haven't, haven't been playing that much, though. Uh, not a big video game guy. Fair enough. Got yeah. on Fortnite last year, too. JC and I would play it out in the family room, and Shank would grab Merritt Beaker's PlayStation and bring it out to the family room and try and play with us. And he, he improved impressively quickly, but he also just – it was hilarious when he first started. We, we just oh, let him terrible. have it. So I don't know what he'd be like playing the show. Uh, yeah, I, we need to get a game, Ryan, because I was telling you, I, I haven't played – this is the first year I've played since COVID, and – Boy, I am. Uh, I'm pretty trash. I played the other night. I'm trying to get a little better, hitting, seeing the ball a little better. But man, I'm struggling right now. But maybe I could lift your confidence even more if you play me. Yeah, you know, uh, serve up some meatballs. <laughs> um, I also asked you why before we went on. Have you been following the NCAA tournament at all? And you guys don't have a lot of time to do much. So we appreciate you being here today. But um, how about you, Ryan? You guys been watching any basketball at all? Uh, tell you the truth, the first basketball game that I really sat down and watched was watching Caitlin Clark the other day at our house yeah. and <laughs> electric it, it was fun i don't know it's like i don't know how to explain it. i've never watched women's basketball before Same. probably in my life and i probably won't again until somebody like caitlin clark rolls around again but it was awesome to watch but that's kind of the only thing i really tuned into i like that and then just watching uconn and how dominant they are and just consistently dominant i think it's pretty cool yeah tristan newton uh trying to win another championship tonight when they take on purdue you can hear that right here on pirate radio i kind of got tired of the caitlin clark talk like what is this all about let me let me watch this and i was like oh okay yeah, she yeah. lives up to all the hype and past <laughs> that um and i like when because it's got to be a lot of pressure uh for athletes like that I, and whether you're a lebron fan or not for him to be on the cover of sports illustrated in high school like how much pressure did he face and he's lived up to it the oh, entire yeah. time so stuff like that impresses me and caitlin clark is it's almost not fair somebody can shoot that good handle the ball that well pass that well yeah. uh, it's it's crazy yeah uh i saw something on twitter where someone was like well of course if you shoot 25 shots a game you're going to score 30 points i'm like i promise you you toss me out <laughs> on the basketball court right now in the ncaa and you give me 30 shots and 40 minutes i'm not scoring 30 points like, yeah I, i'm not a bad athlete by any means but I, I think that's a, one of the more absurd statements that i had seen recently right uh a lot of haters out there guys <laughs> in, in all walks of life all right uh busy week this week is this uh this will be the first five game week for you guys so yeah. anything different in the plan uh what would you do on this monday to get ready for what you got coming up we're going to have some meetings kind of go over some things get a lift in around four and then we've got the gold speech tonight so we're gonna go show out there and be athletes and watch some awards be given out and then 
get to bed early and be ready to go tomorrow. You guys uh, getting any awards tonight? I don't know. I'm sure he's probably getting the rubber arm award or something. <laughs> I don't know. But I, yeah, I have no idea. But hopefully not. Uh, uh, you'll be home all week. That's yeah. a uh, that's a good thing. And amazing. Uh, coming up Wednesday, we'll talk to Bethany Bradshaw. She's got a new book coming out. Uh, Never take this for granted. And that can mean a lot of different things uh i was thinking about it this weekend with the facilities at fau and the i guess lack of interest i mean you guys on the go on the road and see this does it kind of make you appreciate even more what you got here at east carolina i think in a sense yeah i think we, we're always very appreciative because like what we have here like it's not reciprocated reciprocated anywhere else right. I mean, it's just special every time that like i walk out of the dugout and i see our fans like on a friday night or just anytime i interact with the fans it's awesome and the facilities we have are insane so like i it definitely like opens my eyes more so to like what some other people have but it i don't think it makes me appreciate it that much more just because i don't think i could really be much more appreciative at all yeah wide when you see the the crowds here and the crowds maybe on the road and even facility wise playing surface things like that i mean it's it's got to make you uh really be thankful to be here right yeah absolutely we have a great thing going here it's awesome like ryan said to see all the fans that come out and support us and even on the road too like we're down in florida this weekend and we've probably got 50 pirate fans that are behind us that are always cheering us along so the support has been amazing and let's just keep it rolling uh, three straight series to start uh, this conference slate with new teams, new teams to the AAC. So, um, I don't know, was that odd at all? Are you developing any rivalries, any of these guys chippy? Or I-, I talked to the guys last week. So, the UAB, I guess their coach was more mad at the umpire. And yeah. Dixon said, like, between the players, everything was cool. Yeah, pretty players, much. players are fine. Uh, I think the players at FAU are good. UAB, I don't know, UTSA was a weird a weird series oh yeah the uh the hooting in the dugout yeah, or whatever uh, like root was out of character obviously when he said something to their dugout like they had just been kind of like chirping especially when they were up like they faced trey and they hit trey okay yeah. and i don't know they had, had some sort of confidence about them but like i respect having the confidence but like talking to us just kind of I, I, I don't i don't see any need to do that but then obviously there's a pitch thrown under my legs after root pissed off their yeah. dugout and everything and i wouldn't have been as pissed off if the coach didn't say root started it like he was six years old <laughs> and not denying that he threw under my legs i'm like I, I mean i can get hit it's fine i'm not going to react to that but it's like don't say root started it like we're not we're not six years old we're not in kindergarten on the playground like just say we didn't mean to like lie to me for all i care you know but uh, that's the only thing i got from utsa the players were fine too for the most part why well, we've talked about how animated you are after a big strikeout i'm gonna say that most if not all of that is to your dugout right the you're firing yeah. your guys up yeah absolutely it's kind of like a little bit of a spin move that i got going on right now but uh <laughs> spin around turn and look at the dugout and get the crowd into it get the dugout into it uh i've never really been a kind of guy that wants to chirp or like enjoys going out there and like yelling at other people so yeah. i mean most of the time i'm just looking at our dugout trying to get our guys fired up because that's what we want to do uh, a, a walk in the park against NC State. You guys jumped on them early and didn't let up, so their crowd probably couldn't get into it the last half of that game, whatever. But how was that uh, as far as an environment and an atmosphere and uh, and talking and stuff going on? Yeah, that was awesome. I mean, we kind of talked to the guys on Monday, just like a few, like probably 10 of the returners. Like We kind of just ran a meeting and had like a little open forum, kind of like just embrace like what's, what's going to happen because like you're going to hear some stuff said about you that you're like, I don't even – know how you know that or any like just that kind of thing right. like but it's like it's a privilege to have that it's like i don't know it's just awesome like be in that environment like look up see that many people that are watching you do something that you love like with your best friends so we are more so like embrace them and we've never really played great there so let's go and play great there like let's be the team if we're the team we think we are and we know we are like we're going to go in there and we're going to dominate them because we're not going to treat them any differently just because they're an in-state rival you know so i think we did a great job of that and definitely shut the fans down early yeah that was awesome we get a uh, return trip and got uh, some in-state schools coming up this week with elon and then charlotte old dominion coming up on wednesday and then the pirates will hit the road next midweek nc state here by the way on april 23rd at six o'clock that'll be on a tuesday still matchups with duke ahead uh, a rematch with campbell so a uh, lot of opportunities to and, and those games are important right those midweek games uh to beat to, to get those rpi 
numbers up which right now you guys are uh i I know you don't pay attention to that but let's just say things are going pretty good from an rpi standpoint i'll trust you on that one (laughs) (laughs) um ryan got the masters coming up you got a you got a uh, winner picked out i don't but it's hard to go against scotty scheffler just seeing how Mm -hmm. good he is and he he actually like learned how to putt too which is kind (laughs) of scary so yeah i feel like it's hard to go against him but i would like to see john rom do well too even though he made the switch over to live i can't do anything but like that guy yeah i uh, will see the live guys uh yeah. this weekend for the first time in a while why do you uh you into golf at all playing uh, watching playing ryan ryan really got it into me when i first got here uh freshman f- summer pretty much yeah. we would go play what once twice once a week twice probably week least, yeah. yeah but um i don't really follow it much so i don't really know a ton of the players in it but uh if i had to pick i'm gonna go xander shoffley all right jc's favorite player there you go all right i'll pick a different one shank used to have a a little junior hybrid too when he used to play Mm. so you guys had to shout that out (laughs) he like went to goodwill to get a bunch of his clubs (laughs) and he got this little blue junior hybrid like he would stand there and like just do this with it to the side and it would bend and like fold over but like for a month and a half it was his best club like he he hit that better than anything else that he had it was baffling i have my one and only set of clubs i've ever gotten i got it from a pawn shop and nice, uh, i still have them and i haven't played in decades sean how, <laughs> how's your uh you golfing any at all i heard you were on the tiger plan <laughs> i've been on the not by choice <laughs> no but no i haven't played since october but i did oh, I, I did talk to a buddy over the weekend that we need to get out there i do yeah. i play my member guests back home every every summer so i need to get out there and, and swing the club a little bit ryan can you equate anything hitting a baseball to hitting a golf ball or do you try to keep them separate because they can like anything similar different yeah i don't know uh the last month and a half i've actually been relating them quite a bit just kind of the way you're staying in the ground and like not moving forward too much this i've always had a problem kind of getting out of my front leg because i'm very handsy at times so i think like henry and pack kind of talked to me about like staying in my back hip and they related it to like hitting a driver or hitting an iron like you can't shift your weight a ton both directions and have to like and consistently hit the baseball well and it's the same thing with the golf ball so like it's surprisingly resonated with me and it's working out pretty well it's kind of all i'm thinking about so i definitely think about them one and the same but i can see why somebody that wouldn't play and hasn't played golf as much as me like might get thrown off by it i'll ask both of you guys you with coach lartigue what are the the chats like i guess day in day out so you guys watch your at bats and everything i'm sure so what is what tips is he giving you what are you asking him what, what's those conversations um, like i don't know i'm really close with henry and pack now i've hit with them a lot and the main thing they kind of stuff they, they've told me is to just like try and shut my brain off because like I'll get out and like I'll overthink why I got out when it's right. like you got out because you got out. It's not because you're not good. It's not because you did anything wrong. It's because somebody beat you at something that they're going to beat you at more often than you're going to beat them. So it's like stop overanalyzing things and like don't swing that hard. Like you, you don't have to swing that hard. Like I'm almost six foot three, two hundred and fifteen pounds. Like I don't have to try and create a ton of power. So it's like that and just being really simple. I think has been the biggest thing and it's just they'll constantly remind me stay on the ball that kind of thing just little reminders so i I really appreciate them more than i could probably put into words but those are the little conversations we consistently have people we definitely forget about that we as as fans because i always see you know why did ryan swing that ball we forget like it's not on a tee there is a guy out there that's been practicing (laughs) not just this year but his entire life to get you out yeah he actually wants to get me out (laughs) he's not hoping that i really barrel him up yeah um wide how about you with austin knight after your performances um uh, what are you guys talking about uh we'll go back and rewatch some video and just work on some mechanical things if we see anything um most of the time he's pretty spread out because we've got 17 to 19 guys that he's got to cover pretty much by himself uh he's got heath with him which has been awesome and he's been a huge addition for us but uh we don't really talk too much about stuff uh like it's more mental game stuff right if we see something mechanical we're going to talk about it and we can address it and work on drills but like me trey root danny when we're going good we're just like we're good to go and yeah you can you can go help those younger guys that might need help at times uh, mechanics aside how about like sequence like do you do you try to keep guys on their toes with that or do you have a preference where you like to work it 
uh, you know what about pitch sequence and things like that for me i i look down at the watch whatever pops up i'm gonna throw and you're I good to go i don't really <laughs> i don't really think about it too much i'm just like in go mode pretty much uh i know some other guys like to swipe and at times and they worry about that more but I'm gonna look at the pitch, throw the pitch, execute the pitch, and do whatever else I need to do. As a uh, as a Braves fan, rough weekend with Spencer Strider going down, also Shane Bieber. <coughs> like, is this just freak stuff? Do you guys uh, do you talk about like injuries at all and things like that? Why it's happening in um, big leagues in college baseball? I think there's something behind it that can be proven. Uh, there's faster games, less recovery time, all that stuff. I know there's a lot of social media on that. But, I mean, the 20 seconds compared to, what, having as much time as you yeah. wanted before is definitely something that's different, huh. definitely something that pitchers especially haven't really had a ton of time to adapt to. So I think that could be a cause, and I know probably, like, professional players are thinking about that, like, oh, this is the reason, like, let's, let's go prove this so we can make the adjustment, yeah. make, make Major League Baseball less injury prone and less elbow injuries I've, like that. I've heard that from the pros and it kind of stinks because I am a big fan of faster games and the yeah. pitch clock but I don't want you guys to get hurt out there so right. maybe there is a happy medium maybe uh, maybe we extend that a little bit or, or something happens yeah I don't know I feel like the pitch clock might have something to do with it but like just watching like when I ran camp this summer it's like kids are trying to throw everything as hard as they can they're trying to hit the ball as far as humanly possible and it's like i don't know i feel like like when i was a kid i i just like hit i didn't try and hit a home run if i hit a home run it was on accident especially when i was younger it's like more so i tried to learn the game before i like really excelled in it but i feel like people are seeing home runs hit 500 feet now and they're Mm -hmm. trying to get their little eight-year-old kid to do it and it's like that's probably not good for his back to be swinging full force at the age of eight or it's probably not good for a kid's arm to be trying to snap off a breaking ball at nine years old so i feel like that definitely has something to do with it too the way that the game is being taught to the younger generation and i think that maybe reel it back and remember that it's a game when they're nine years old like whether they hit a home run or not it's not gonna make a difference and you're not winning the world series Ryan and Crystal Wildens for Shangman here in the Pirate Radio Studios. I know you guys got a run. You got Elon coming up on Tuesday, Old Dominion Wednesday, then a three game set against Charlotte. Also, a uh, spring football game uh, coming up this weekend as well. So, kind of the uh, who you guys got in the championship tonight? Purdue, Zach Eady, or, uh, or UConn? I got UConn. Yeah, I think UConn's going to destroy him. All right, there you go. The picks are in. Guys, uh, keep up the good work. Appreciate Absolutely. you uh, hanging out with us today, and we'll talk to you again soon. No doubt. Good to be here. Ryan McChrystal, Wide Lunch for Shankman. Uh, We'll be back in 20 minutes live on Pirate Radio Live. Talk to you then.